Stealth, thank you so much for joining me here on Smite Memoirs. How are you feeling today? No, I'm feeling good, man. I'm happy that you're having me here. I'm, I'm ready to relive the glory days. So this specific game, tell me and the fans at home a little bit about this game and why you chose it. So this is Smite World Championship, the very first one. This is game five of it um, and the finals. We just got done uh, beating Titan 2-0. So we only needed to win one more game. Yep. Uh, and then we lost two games, so they almost reverse sweep us. And so we're coming into this game, 2-2, two -two, next game wins. Um, everything is on the line. A lot and of pressure. It's pretty intense, there's a lot of pressure. A lot of money on the line. A lot of money. So yes, like you mentioned, the reverse sweep that was about to happen. And I think that kind of changed your guys' strategy through picks and bans a little bit. Tell me about that. Yeah, a little bit. So the previous game, we just got our butts kicked by Ares. Um, we couldn't do anything about it. Like people just kept getting Ares ulted and pulled away and we just did no chance. And we were like, why are we getting beat? We have no idea. And so we took a couple minutes to reconvene after the match and we figured out that Ares was the problem. Um, so we decided to ban Ares from the game and ban Ymir. We decided if we ban all of the comfortable supports, then we're gonna have an easier time going into the match. Yeah, take out Connie alive from there. And now I wanna talk about your specific pick into game five, the Scylla. Talk me through that one. Well, I was playing Scylla a lot at this point. I was very comfortable with her just as a character. I was streaming a lot, playing Scylla for fun. I was just really comfortable with her. And at this point, I was like, just give me Scylla. No matter what happens, I'm pretty sure we're gonna win. And after this game, now the legendary MLC Scylla term was born and birthed from your Cognitive Prime days. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into the game. I wanted to just fast forward straight into the first blood. Things were relatively quiet. Uh, Jeff on the Sylvanas, he starts rotating around and much to no one's surprise, when the Sylvanas rotates, they kind of get focus fired. Um, tell me how you guys felt after this specific play, or talk me through the play. Yeah, sure. So Jeff is wandering over by himself and he gets picked. Um, this kind of happens a lot, not something that Jeff does, but just like a tree walking around in the forest, he's very slow. Um, we always try to follow up when our support gets focused and picked because they've burned all of their cooldowns in one character. So we kind of clean up, we're able to get um, one kill in return. And we're able to force them away from experience and gold and other things, so we're able to get the stuff after the stuff a little bit. So I wanted to rewind there a little bit because we were looking at it before, the, uh, <laughs> before we went live and mm -hmm. we were like kind of joking around like, and he might have lived here if he got that execute off. Do you think that would have changed anything? It's possible. I mean, it, it, I definitely did kill this person. He was executing him, and he could have went up into the sky and been safe. Um, Close call. Sorry Close about call. that. <laughs> <laughs> We're both fighting for the kill. We both want that execute. Yeah, it's funny how that works, right? Aquang and Scylla, they both want the last hit for different reasons, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Funny little instance. So we're going to fast forward to the second point in the game that I wanted to talk about. A huge team fight that rolls through around this point, 8.37 mark. You guys are playing aggressive, and then everyone just commits on Jeff here. Oh yeah, they were trying to get Andy right there, but Andy blinked out and Jeff just happened to be there. So they're burning all their cooldowns on Jeff again. They Athena ult, Nemesis dash in. They've used everything at this point. So here I am in Scylla ult, just riding around. I haven't hit anybody yet. I'm just riding around. I missed that guy. I tried to take Andy's kill again. Then I die. So I haven't done anything yet. Um, but luckily my team is able to back me up here. They they covered my butt a lot this game. This was a great fight for you guys. I believe after you guys kill out Kanye Life playing the Athena, you guys get a two for four. You lose yourself. And Athena Jeff. almost dashed away right there. Yeah, uh, very good timing kill. by Omega. And then you guys get golf here afterwards. After this point, you guys this start is, building a lead. This is the best feeling in the world, being dead and seeing your team clean up people and then get a gold fury afterwards. This is like the confidence you need to just know that you're gonna have a, a good game after that. True synergy between you guys. What were the comms like actually during that fight? The comms were really hype. I don't really remember it too well. I just remember in general, everyone's really positive. Um, if anybody dies, nobody's dwelling on the fact. We're just 100% going forward. Let's do this. We're gonna win. We're having fun. How was the shot calling for your team at Worlds? Like, who was doing what specifically? I think it was Bear and Andy. Um, they may have been swapping between the two. I think Andy would be making the, like, pick calls and, like, jungle calls and stuff. And Bear usually handles the, like, overarching, like, let's do Gold Fury, let's do Fire Giant, let's push a tower. And then Andy's more like, in the moment, let's kill these people. Gotcha. As a jungler should, probably. All right, the next point in this game, around the 15-minute mark, a lot of sloppiness by both teams, actually. Um, but you guys hit a very hot Scylla ultimate 
after this. I believe you guys were chasing down a kill. Agni dashed down. They're trying to burn that gold fury. Yeah, so yet again, they go Jeff on to Jeff. Him, they nim alt him. They're just trying to kill Jeff this game. I miss everything on the nemesis. And but then, then I hit, hit, hit a huge Silla right there. Killed two people right away. And then Apollo just all did for me. Stood still perfectly for me. What kind of a feeling is that when like, you know there's a target, Apollo ulti or regardless, yeah. that can't move, but yeah. you hit the Silla. How does that feel? I, it feels great. Like all the marbles were just falling into place. I really feel like I was just on autopilot right there. Like I didn't do anything super special. I kind of just altered a gold fury that everybody was grouped up on. I ulted an Apollo who was standing still because he was ulting. Like, things were just going our way, it felt. And that's the true benefits of playing a Scylla right there when members like that do group up. After you guys get the tier 2 tower in middle, tier 1 tower in left lane, you guys are up 5,500 gold at the 15 minute mark. Back then, that's a lot of gold. How are you guys feeling at this point? We're feeling great. Um, I mean, yeah, we just, we killed people, won a team fight. So you, you'd feel good about that. But then after that, we get a ton of towers, so our gold lead just spikes. Um, Knowing that you're going to go into the next fight with this much of an advantage just feels great. Man, Andy's Alquang was on fire this yeah, game. Yeah, the, Alquang was a very top pick at this moment. Uh -huh. And they, uh, he, he was banned a lot during this world championship, but Andy was like... That's the first game that it was allowed in the finals, right? I'm not I sure. Uh, but, but I'll have I, to look back at I that. do remember when we gave Andy Alquang, it was pretty certain that he was gonna he do really good He just slapped with yeah. it. <laughs> he was, he was, he's a crazy player, man. So this specific play, I want you to talk to us about your mindset during this play. Yeah. So it looks like I'm the only one going in here. Athena is alting that Apollo. Apollo's trying to get away. Um, and there's Agni Bombs too. My team has dipped out and I'm going in. I'm already in Scylla ult. I'm confident that if I hit that Apollo, he will die to my Scylla ult. Um, if I miss, it's possible that I'm going to die because I'm no longer CC immune from the execute and then my ult. It's a very risky play, but I was confident in my ability to get the kill there and get out afterwards. That could have that could have gone bad, but I'm glad it didn't. I mean, you saw the play, it happened, it felt very natural, uh, very impressive stuff, waiting out the Athena ultimate as well to avoid that damage mitigation. Mm -hmm. You were patient and calculating, everything just seemed to be working out, that red buff as well. You knew that was going to be a kill as long as you hit it. Yeah, you so. said it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're the MVP Worlds at Worlds 1 here. Um, next play, it's actually the game that opened up the fire giant here. 22:34 in about 15 seconds. So you guys have a commanding 10,000 goal lead. You guys are just basically warding, looking for any picks that you can. Um, yet again, you guys are looking for a pick. Talk me through this moment. Uh, well, for some reason, I'm pushed further up than my support, which is scary. You're feeling yourself. Um, but luckily, Andy's here to back me up. We get some poke damage. That's all we're trying to do right there. I bait out an Aegis, get my dash off. Um, they're trying to go in on Andy right here, and luckily not me, because my dash was down, I would have been forced to alt and maybe in a bad spot. Um, now they're going on Barret. It seems like they're switching targets a lot, so this is really good for us. We're able to group up right here and pin down this Osiris who already ulted, and then we kind of just crowd around him and he's just dead from all of us being there. And then same with this Athena right here. And so we've picked two at this point, and we're all at pretty good health and Fire Giant is up. Omega's back in, he's able to teleport back in. Um, and this puts us in a really good position to take this Fire Giant. How do you feel now that you got two picks? You know you're getting the Fire Giant guaranteed. After this, you could probably see Jeff Phoenix like almost right away before even backing. Talk me through not only your mentality, but your teams at this point. Yeah, Fire Giant is like the next step into winning the match. Once you get that, then from there, it's just like play safe, get towers, don't get picked, and you can possibly win the match from getting this Fire Giant. So we, we know that victory is possible at this point. We just have to play it safe and keep calm, but stay hyped. Speaking of staying calm and being even more hype, this is the play that everyone remembers, that play that will never not be any Smite highlight reel. Your MLC Scylla plays after getting Fire Giant. This was before the notification of a team getting Fire oh, yeah. Giant. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Titan had no idea that you guys yeah, were doing th this. This is so sick. Th it's perfect. Three people grouped up. I dash over the swall, just hit all three with the root. Get that alt right there. Oh man. <laughs> We're not gonna miss. talk about the missed one, but. I missed my two right there, but luckily. Actually, he pushed him into I your know. crush. Yeah, yeah. There, there has been moments this game where my two has hit somebody. Barracuda has impaled the person out of the crush before I can explode it. Calculated. But by the this way. time, 
this time it worked. I missed my crush and he pushed the person into it. <laughs> he realized at that perfect point. Synergy. synergy between the back line was perfect. So I also wanted to ask you about the comms here because not just you dashing through the wall there, it was also um, Barra jumping over. You guys saw them decentering that ward. What were the comms like? Well, we knew that there were more of us than there were them. We saw them on the wards. We saw that there were two or three people grouped up right there and we're like, Okay, we got Fire Giant. They don't know we have it yet. They're kind of still coming in to maybe like check on us. We should all just jump over the wall right now and just get surprise. them, surprise them, kill them. And, and we did, we all agreed. We all jumped over together. We all saw that that plane needed to happen. Now the game uh, before we actually, let's rewind that because I did want to talk about this right here. Looking at the bottom left of the screen, your little fist pump action. <laughs> You must yeah. have done great, felt that, great. That was that crazy. Uh, me and Andy have watched this playback many times, and every time we watch it back, he says how hype that fist bump is. He said it made him really excited during the match when when I. Did oh yeah, because he was sitting to your he was right, right to my right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he could see so that. He was right like, side. "What's going on? Oh yeah, fist bump." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, now you guys are just winning the game. You guys are hype. Yep. Can you even compare this moment to anything? Like how would you I can't. Compare this no, moment? I mean I just wanted to hug Andy. Omega gets his drink of water, Bear and Jeff hug each other. Um, no, this was crazy, man. Uh, I, I can't describe this moment. It was just, it felt so good. I was just so happy. I was so relieved because right before this, you have the realization of we might not win because it's 2-2 now. We could get reverse sweeped. So before you're like super excited, oh, it's 2-0. Oh no, it's 2-2. And so your just emotions are all over the place. Like a roller coaster. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then finally being able to win. At this point, we were also just really exhausted and tired. Um, just because we've been playing for so long that it, it, at this point, like, oh, we're done. It's over. Like, we finally done it. I'm so glad that you joined us today here for a Smite Memoirs video, MLC. Thank you again so much for your time. Where can the fans find you at home? Twitter, Twitch, YouTube? You can find whatever. me on Twitter. Uh, Twitter.com slash MLC underscore underscore stealth with a three because the original underscore was taken, so I'd have to. Are you gonna try to fight Twitter for that one one day? Uh, you know, we'll see. Well, if I change my at, then it removes my Twitter verification. So oh, okay. I'm fine with the double underscore. Okay, fair enough. Thank you again so much, MLC Stealth, for your time. I hope you guys at home enjoyed this video as well. See you next time.